talent are dancing together in completely new and different ways. We must be, and the question before us is, will we be the disruptive heroes that this moment calls for? Oxford University has said in the next quarter century, about half the work that is currently, about half the jobs that are currently being done and exist will go away. And not just, this is not just blue collar, manufacturing, truck driver, bringing oil out of the ground work. It is knowledge and service work. All of our work, the work that we do, will also be radically changed. Rob Nail, who is CEO of Singularity University, has said that in the very near future, 60 to 70 percent of CEO level decision making will easily be able to be done by AI algorithms. Senior executive decision making, most of it being able to be replicated through AI algorithms. Now, Singularity University is way out there in the future. Let me be more realistic and conservative. The most conservative numbers that I could find is that 30 to 40 percent of our decision making, the people in this room, will soon be replicated by AI. The next wave of productivity will not come from working everybody harder, faster, smarter. It will become coming from the analytics behind our work, behind our training and development, behind our performance management. Analytics is going to be driving the future of work. And a huge chunk of it is how we deliver that personalized, tailored learning. We need to know each individual's needs far better than we know right now. So when I talk to groups like this, I need to implore you and tell you that the future of HR is IT. Now, yes, yes, people will always be our most important asset. People are what truly matters. But how we leverage that asset, how we make the best use of their time and attention and talents, how we do our best work and enable everyone around us to do their best work will come from the analytics, not just more hard work. So the future of HR is wrapped around and together with IT. We need to do a much better job of being focused on the analytics and how all of that drives that. Now, for some of us in this room, that may be difficult. So what I want all of us to remember, if you remember any one slide I show you today, it's this one. The future of work will be outside of your comfort zone. We cannot deliver the future of work to our organizations unless we step outside of our comfort zones. So that's the biggest challenge that we're facing. So the first choice I want to share with you that every single person in this room must make is about simplicity the ability to leverage simplicity as a new competitive advantage. You've heard the term VUCA, volatile, uncertain, chaotic, accelerated. Well, every single person is experiencing VUCA and it's getting going crazy and they don't know what to focus on. We need to make it easier for every single individual to succeed and that will come through simplicity. But this is not dumbing things down. This is not an overextended focus on technology. We will use tech to get there. But the reality is technology will not be the driver of simplicity. 
It is our attitude and our values as to how we leverage that simplicity. So what I want you to start thinking about, about simplicity and how to use it, it's not one click button, it's not the greatest app, we need to be understanding of where simplicity is coming from. And throughout all of human history, simplicity always has been and always will be about power. Throughout human history, winners have always had things made more simple for them. Losers, always more complicated. Well, in corporate history, who do you think the winners are? And who do you think the losers are? I've been studying simplicity for over a quarter century, simplicity in organizations. Over a million people around the globe surveyed and interviewed. And yes, while we are definitely making amazing progress, and everybody has amazing simplicity in their own personal smartphones, when it comes to organizational simplicity, overall we are unbelievably still corporate-centered. So my passionate plea when I ask you simpler for whom is will we step up and be passionate about creating learner-centered, user-centered, worker-centered, individualized simplicity? Because so far our track record is that we make it easier for companies to succeed, not necessarily the workers. Now the good news that I can say here that I couldn't say anywhere else that I travel the globe, the great news is according to a recent study by IBM, this region does far better than anybody else on the globe at listening to your employees and bringing that into action as to what they need. So what I need you to do is not listen to my wisdom from this front of the stage, is go back and listen to your employees. They will tell you what they need simplified if you truly, truly listen. What will your legacy be three years from now? Now, you know, Bill, it's early in the morning. Why are you making me think? I don't want to think about this till I die. What are you making me think? Your legacy. Think of your legacy as your portfolio of all the decisions you are going to make, all the strategic choices you are going to make over the next three years. You put them all together and they are your legacy of your work. And why is this so important? In the next three years, everybody back at work, everything they know or understand or are thinking about right now will be completely changed and disrupted. Everything they feel about how things should be will be completely disrupted. And everything they are doing three years from now will be totally disrupted. So you, you are the leader they are depending on and your legacy is going to lead, that from the, lead them from that VUCA environment into simplicity and clarity and focus. So your legacy is really the cumulative effect of your decision making over the next three years. So when I sit down with leaders by you know, one on one coaching, I ask them to do three words. What I'd like you to do for this exercise right now is just put down one word. If I talk to every single person whose lives you touched, if you could just come up with one word that you would want them to say about the effect of your work, what would that be? For me, it's uh, consciousness. What about consciousness? Well, um, with all the technology and everything and the human on the other side, it can be quite difficult and confusing and people can lose themselves. So um, it's the ability to channel things correctly and be conscious about impact. So very conscious of our impact on every person. So all of those were great, thank you. If I, if I had more time in our opening keynote, I, I'd do more people, but let me take those as representative and why that one word is so important. What we just did 
You know, what I try to do as Mr. Simplicity around the globe is simplify a lot of things. What we just did is leadership development and personal development simplified. If you think about your one word and all the technologies that you're going to be leveraging over the next three years, if you, every time you make a decision, whether it's conscientiousness or efficiency or anything else, whatever your one word is, that is your personal strategic plan for change over the next three years. The hardest work that all of us are going to be doing in the future of work is not technological. That's going to be hard, but it's not the hardest work. The hardest work will be, will I change who I am and how I look at things differently, faster than the rate of disruption coming at me and my people? And why that assessment tool is so important, why simplicity is so important, why your legacy is so important, why all the choices you make are so important. The future of work will be driven by tech. The future of HR is tech. However, our personal choices that we make over the next few years will determine how amazing the future of work is for everyone in our organizations. I've met many of you before I came up to the stage. I know we have the leaders of the future in this room. All that remains to be decided is will each of us make the choices we need to make to make everybody, everybody's lives that we touch, future strong. Thank you for your time.